And uh, my talk is about approaching React component libraries. And um, since a lightning talk format is quite creative, you need to be also uh, really thoughtful about how do you present the content in a really limited amount of time. And uh, since I've been in the topic of approaching component libraries within different technologies for quite a few years already, I get myself uh, a lot of, I, I get really biased and uh, I'm, uh, take some things as granted as like really obvious things that actually at some point are not. And we already heard quite a lot of things about components, components, uh, building cloudable UIs. And uh, we also heard some uh, references to component libraries as well. And what I wanted to go through in my talk is to go like through step-by-step -step quests on how you as a developers could approach such things as a, such piece as a React component libraries. So uh, let me first introduce myself. So my name is Robert Karitanov, as also Nicole mentioned. I'm working in Liberty Global as a, a front-end development lead at uh, one of the projects, uh, which is yeah, also the Zigo. And uh, right now, uh, in our team, we're rebuilding from scratch one of the services we have. So since most of you are uh, local uh, and probably have some, some uh, Zigo products subscribed as well, you probably heard about this product before. So in current stage, we're focusing the web application, rebuilding it with React, which is quite obvious on React Conference, right? Uh, plus flexible, Node.js, uh, as it is as a morphic application, plus full test coverage, and a lot of things that we experiment on together uh, with all the other processes we uh, try to rebuild and uh, iterate, especially in, uh, which is especially could be challenging in a large enterprise company. And giving just a few insights, uh, this is the UIs of new application that uh, we're now focusing on. And uh, right now, as I said, it's only web, but uh, pretty much soon we're trying to put the new UI concepts and new uh, technology base into a whole lot of other platforms like iOS devices, some, uh, yeah, which is also possible now, like Windows applications for both desktop and mobile. And being uh, on the edge and also uh, being on the edge of implementing uh, new versions of UI means that we need to focus uh, and uh, take our UI component libraries really seriously. Since uh, we're like ahead of uh, all the other products in that sense and we're first adopting the new refreshed UI, uh, we need to build some kind of libraries that uh, will be easily approachable by any other developers from other teams, even from other platforms, meaning that uh, the whole ecosystem of our products should look the same, should look consistent. And that's why we also choose React, which was one of the reasons to uh, make the component reuse really possible across multiple platforms. So this is an example that you see here on a slide uh, of a sketch file that our designer currently prepared. Uh, which was quite actually nice that uh, we didn't even need to convince him that this is the right thing to approach components as a separate instances that could just have different states and uh, could be reused in many ways. So in that sense, we were lucky with designer and after receiving these kind of things, it's our job as a developers to implement them the way so it could be reused as much as possible, of course, and could be uh, also presented properly to everybody in the team. So as I mentioned, I have just, uh, uh, 10 minutes or so, plus some questions. So I'll just refer to other talks that I've been giving on a topic in general before. So I was talking about uh, tooling for building React component libraries before. Yeah, so taking a picture will be really useful. I'll anyway also share the slides. Uh, so there was quite a lot of talks and uh, yeah, regarding the limited amount of time, I can go deep to any details. So if you're interested in the topic, just go to links uh, after my talk. And um, right now I'll guide you through sort of a quest and step-by-step uh, step we'll just go through main points which are also related like uh, in the order uh, from, where you, from where you start and at what, which point you end up with uh, full-fledged component library. So the main parts in the story and the quest will be choosing the tech base which is quite easy and you'll see it in a sec. Uh, we'll go a bit through tools and of course uh, building part which is the, the main part. Uh, which for basically all the tools and everything, uh, including today's conference, is built for. 
So choosing technology base, of course, is obvious. Uh, React is the probably one of the best choices to build extensible and uh, reusable component libraries. And not only because I'm today standing on a React conference uh, stage, but also because uh, if we look at the early uh, presentations about React uh, done by Christopher Trudell, uh, where actually like three years ago or two and a half years ago, uh, React was presented as a library for building uh, reusable UI components. So now we have a lot of other things on top of that. We have React Native, the whole ecosystem. But first, it was mostly about building reusable UI components to probably uh, solve the scale at which React is growing and so on. And besides the original intentions, here is another proof that basically shows us that uh, they really succeeded achieving that. So two and a half years ago, we just saw an intention to build a great tool for building usable components. And now we see that only being like three times uh, younger than, than Angular, React already have more reusable components available open source. Of course, multiply that by 100, maybe even 1,000, and you will get the real amount of components happening and developed uh, even uh, during my talk. So the technology is clear. Uh, next thing uh, is tooling. So of course, it's really important to have uh, nice tools to uh, work efficiently and to achieve your goals uh, as fast as possible. So one of the tools of my choice for uh, building really nice component examples and uh, building uh, pages with interactive uh, sandboxes and code examples that you can play around with and uh, see which kind of state component could uh, take its journey. So it's React Style Gadis, which is also integrated as a plugin in uh, the platform that I'm building. Another tool besides that, uh, which is now gaining a lot of attention, is React Storybook. Probably it was just released. At least I saw the article about it just like uh, this week even, or uh, a week before. And uh, it's really becoming uh, popular right now amongst React developers. And this is about writing so-called stories about components, mostly about higher level components, uh, where you could define how your UI component consisting of other smaller ones will evolve through time. So with uh, 2D app, it's like the initial state, the state where there are some 2Ds, and so on. And uh, the whole idea about uh, taking some other tool and bringing your components to there is that uh, you can focus more on the components like this, and you can uh, develop right uh, outside your project, being focused only on a specific part on a specific component and, and also trying to make it reusable and trying to make it isolated as well. So as I mentioned, I also uh, quite a uh, long time in the field. This is the tool that I was building. It doesn't have, uh, in its core doesn't have any specific things to uh, use with React, but it's really pluggable. And one of the plugins is an integration with React style guides that I mentioned before. So basically this thing is like a wrapper uh, that allows to combine different tools and actually allow to uh, build a component library with Angular components and React components under the same roof. And uh, so yeah, we now, after choosing the technology and choosing the tools, uh, we now approach the most important step, which is building, because without basically the code and without components itself, there wouldn't be any kinds of tools or wouldn't be any component libraries at all. So building some set of reusable items doesn't force you to go really complex. So you don't need to build some really complex components, really configurable to make them reusable and to, to put them in some sort of component library. You can start really small. So this is an example on the screen of a stateless component, which is possible with uh, the latest version of uh, React. So basically you can start with a simple button, uh, knowing that probably it will grow over time since it's not Web development is not that simple, and uh, it, it may start with simple steps, but eventually it will grow. That's why also there is a big reason on, on using some kind of component libraries to actually provide some guidance on uh, this complexity. So having a small component plus some tools that I already referred before, you get already quite fully pledged documentation page about the component, which at start could just have one example, but of course, uh, when you continue building the, the components uh, and adding more options to it, 
you will see more and more options on the page, which, which then makes a lot of sense. This is the hardest part with UI components is that you need to see the render state as well. Just reading the code, you can't actually render the, the picture in your head. And uh, this is the only like uh, problem with reusing parts uh, within within like components have that have UI is that you need to see the results and you need to see how they actually perform and how they look. So also just with few components and plus additional tooling on that, you can have quite uh, approachable and uh, easily to search a component library. And uh, we'll stay here long. Uh, let's continue with the, the next steps, which is basically uh, kind of a, a next steps of uh, the next evolution steps of the component that eventually will land into your reusable parts. So this is an example just of a simple implementation of inline styles. And you heard about it before uh, from Oleg as well. And there are a lot of tools to manage that. But what I wanted to highlight here is that you may like it or not. You may like writing CSS and JavaScript or not. But if we're talking about reusable components, then uh, having an ability to just require a component, and if it comes together with styles and everything like straight out of the box, it's really a powerful thing. So you don't need to uh, manage different things. Like if, for example, we'll take a reusable Angular component, this will mean that you'll need to copy some directive code. You will need to copy some styles from somewhere outside or to integrate into your build system, which could be quite a hassle. But with uh, CSS and JS, it's soluble almost out of the box. Even CSS modules doesn't allow that because they are requiring some additional uh, webpack configuration. But if you expect that any project in your uh, company or across many different companies could just require and use component, this is currently at least uh, the best way to go. So of course, as I said, components evolve. Page, the documentation page of the components becomes more complex. And this is the point where actually it makes a lot of sense to, to have this kind of description. Uh, the pages uh, where you can actually see which kind of property, properties you can pass to component and how they will actually look like and so on. Another thing that uh, React uh, Storybook uh, was drawing attention to is that style guides and storybooks, probably you can call them as well, uh, allow us to focus on component development outside all the other uh, environment that could, uh, could, could be uh, distracting you also during the development time. So also most of the tools allow you to uh, take one of the components, maybe even a component with a specific state, so you can iterate with it with a complete focus on uh, the one component itself. And that's basically how uh, the recommended way of building component libraries uh, is defined. Like uh, if you build everything always at first as isolation, like keep in mind something like a mobile first. So there is also an approach like style guide first, component in isolation first, and then only going back to projects. Another cool uh, project, which is, was also uh, announced quite uh, not long time ago, it's also from an author of React Style Guide. I'm not sure if it's visible from here, but the thing that you need to remember is uh, React CDK, uh, which is like a bootstrapping uh, template that allows you to, to have everything for isolated environment out of the box. So you just bootstrap your new component. And thanks to the whole tooling set up for you uh, for that reasons, with just one command, you can run your environment and continue building. After which you just do something like npm publish, or uh, I don't know if you're still using Bower, you can publish the component to Bower if you want. But uh, what I wanted to highlight here is that sharing the component and sharing React component that uh, could have everything inside of it is really easy. You can just publish it anywhere, or you could just put in any folder on of any project you want, and then just install it in other. Uh, another project or uh, just require it from any folder, meaning that your component will be ready out of the box and everybody will just benefit from uh, collaboration on the same component, which had like, which could have also a few iterations on bug fixing, feature improvements, and so on. And of course, it's happening all the time. So there are quite a lot of big component libraries out there, which are uh, public and are maintained by community quite actively. So Material UI, for example, is using 
inline styles quite extensively, meaning that you can have this uh, full experience of reusing component with just uh, one line of code, which is requiring it. And of course, many more to come. I believe that most of you already have some similar sets of uh, reusable components inside your uh, companies as well. And since I have no much time left, and probably we won't have time any uh, any time for questions as well, you can reach me uh, through Twitter using React Amsterdam hash hashtag, or just catch me uh, after uh, after my talk during the coffee breaks or on during the after party. So thanks for your attention. Hope it was a bit more approachable. <laughs>